Hi guys, my name is Luke and today I want to give you a quick tour of our Sprinter van. Go check it out. So this is how the van looks in travel mode. One of the favorite features of the van build is this table and the way, how functional it is. It's a lagoon table. It has two mount options. One for travel mode is what we call it for whenever the seats, everybody's facing forward. And we use the other mount options for whenever we swivel the seats around. And I'll show you guys in a minute how it all works out. But the way it is right now works really well for whenever we have kids back here. Yeah, it gives them a room to play or put their things on or have lunch or whatnot but also you can swivel around and go in between the front seats get out of the way and create a whole different setup now it can be used by the front whenever you travel you want to put your burritos it gives you a place for that and opens up the whole rear area okay let's check out the mount options here you can see there's also the outlet for the diesel heater under the passenger seat base in there we have an s4 d2 s2 heater and it's been working out really good up here we actually have the controls for it and also there are a couple of 12 volt outlets for the rear passengers to charge devices and stuff all right Let's try to swivel this around and see how it looks in hangout mode. In order to go from drive mode to like hangout mode, uh, we can start swiveling seats around. The driver seat it's easy. You don't need to move the table. Maybe just kind of get it out of the way. But you just undo the lock and you swivel it around like that. And then you can use the table. This that's the nice thing about the lagoon table just because it just kind of swivels all the way so many configurations and uh it just works great you can get it out of the way get in and out easy and um yeah it works great so in order to swivel this guy we have to actually move the whole setup on the other map first we start by removing the tabletop not too bad undo the leg get it out of the way unlock the seat swivel it around and that's that and now putting the leg back on and getting the table this guy seems to be not too bad but yeah so that's kind of how it all works out About the rest of the build so these are the sleeping arrangements we got the platform bed which uh, is on an aluminum extrusion frame we're going to talk about aluminum extrusions because we're going to see them everywhere and i don't know how technical i will get in this video if you guys care for this type of stuff just let me know in the comments below and i'll try to Make another video about working with aluminum extrusions and what you can make out of it there's a lot of videos out there but i might be able to add my two cents so yeah the the main platform bed is on a frame that is adjustable you're going to try to peek at it there are some brackets on the side and you can go up or down we're going to talk about that later maybe and we have the bunk beds or the shelves these guys are again multi-purpose they're easily removable they hold a lot of weight and we use them for storage or bunk beds whenever there's four of us traveling here let's check out how they work so the way the bunk beds work is very easy we remove whatever we store up there and we open it up like that then we usually have some sort of a pad that we throw up there. And now we have a bunk bed. 
and these guys are super strong i i don't mind getting up there myself and i might show you but the aluminum extruders are super strong and these are structurally what makes the whole build you see them up here everything that kind of holds on to that and these guys are super strong uh, yeah but this is a bit so same thing happens with this guy you got about 25 inches 24 5 inches or so wide leaves you a little bit of room to move in between not a lot but it's usable so again so another add on top of that and this is slip mode Not the most comfortable place, but it's about the outside. Putting the bunch, the bunch together again is not super difficult. I'm not gonna go over everything. Basically, put it, wrap everything back up, flip it around, move stuff back here, and yeah, it's very easy to kind of go between modes and um, yeah I think it's very functional okay so let's check out the bed Ugh. the bed is super strong obviously and uh, what I like the most here is having the windows and the fan so, and the windows open. Ah, and this is the best spot in the house. You get the cross breeze. That's what van life is about. So that's the bed. Let's uh, move on and talk about the midship, the area where we're doing the cooking, we're storing food, we got the battery here, the sink, water, AC, a lot of stuff going on in this area. <clears throat> First, let's talk about the layout. We have counters on both sides. We have a 24 inch counter on the passenger side with a three drawer setup. And we have a 15, actually about a 17 inch counter on the driver's side with lots of room for doing all kinds of prep work and things like that over on the passenger side the top drawer houses the induction cooktop we have a two plate induction cooktop and room for utensils this has worked out pretty well it's also removable if you would rather cook outside or you can just set it up on this extension right here and you can cook with a view but this is a really great setup because you're surrounded by counter space you have the fridge down there you got the sink over here and it just it just works well let's talk about the sink so we have a pretty basic setup uh, we have a deep sink and a Dometic system it's not your full size setup but it works the compromises we're willing to work with the benefit is having a very simple system and it's all domestic there is a fresh water in the back and there is a drain a gray water up front there's a quick disconnect there for easy swapping jugs the jugs are not expensive and you can get a bunch of fresh water jugs and store them in the back and just swap them out. It's simple. I don't really worry about, especially this time of year when it's freezing, I don't really worry about anything getting damaged if the thing is just sitting out in front of the thing. And yeah, it's been, it's simple, but it works. I really appreciate that we don't go through a lot of water. I don't really care that the water flow is a little less. I'm 
Yeah, it still works out great. Next to the sink, we have our fridge. This is a 12 volt Dometic CFX, I think 45 liter. Easy access, lots of space. Also, as mostly things in the van, it so serves dual purpose. You can actually pull it. You can use it as a desk <laughs> with a counter above or even on the other side. Also next to the sink, we have our unconventional AC solution. This is a portable unit from LG. It's the most energy efficient we found. It is a dual inverter setup, which makes for easy on off compressor cycles. Uh, the controls are over here, also got Bluetooth and stuff. It's ducted outside and there's also an intake under the floor for colder air. And because we only use it a couple times a year, we decided to go this way and whenever we don't use it we just replace it with another cabinet and it's been working out pretty good okay let's take a quick look at the garage area over on the passenger side we have our setup of three click chairs and a table that we can deploy rather quick easy on off those are super easy to hike with if we ever go anywhere it's easy to throw them in the backpack take them with us they've been working really well shout out to click and so yeah the rest of the garage is pretty wide open don't mind our starling setup there we have a little porta potty and the driver's side houses 300 amp hours of batteries that charge from the alternator also this is the panel that fuses that houses the fuse box for the setup this works separate from our Gold Zero Yeti 6000 bank that we're going to talk to about in a minute. So we have two electric systems in this build. Okay, let's go back inside and check it out. One of the most important things about the build is the power system. So in this build, we ended up with two separate systems. One is the 300 amp hour battery housing here which powers most of the light loads so the lights the fan the heater everything is ran by the system in the back for all the heavy loads we have the goal zero yeti 6000 this gives us 500 amp hours additional on top of the other system it gives us a 2000 watt inverter plenty of outlets and also over on this side we plug in our 600 watt solar panel system which keeps this battery charged very efficiently and that is the only I mean the only the only method that we've been using to charge this battery you can also charge it from the grid and uh, you can set it up to charge from the alternator as well our solar setup has been sufficient to keep it maintained it's got different charging profiles we've been running it into what's called battery safe mode so it only charges to 85% and it discharges down to 15% I think um, it's easy to see the state of the battery the input the output there's an app and everything's worked pretty well so far happy with it for lighting we have four rows of LED strips on each side which are dimmable and you can set it up depending on what the mood is. On top of the LED strips, we have this lots of 12 volt outlets that we can plug in additional lights, kind of like we have back here. Those you can use for reading. They're also dimmable and stuff. One of the LED strips is controllable from the bed. So that's the light that you usually turn 
on first when you wake up and you turn it on, turn it off flat when you go to it. And yeah, having the power to adjust and dim the lights made for a pretty cool setup. We also have some additional little spotlights that dim if you don't want to wake up everybody those work well we also have a couple of them in here and this guys is pretty much the end of the video thank you for hanging out with me till the end if you made it through uh, I appreciate it a lot. I'm aware the production is pretty crap and the lack of editing makes it painful to watch. But uh, I do appreciate you watching and if you like vent content and vent builds and stuff like that, we have a 4x4 Sprinter van that we're going to start working on as soon as this van moves on to its next set of adventures. So please give me a thumbs up if you like the video or leave a comment if there's anything that you found useful or if there's anything that you wish we have done different any feedback is good any feedback is welcome so thanks for watching and hope to see you in a new video